Well, it was a half three start this morning, so I've necked about a litre of coffee and I'm now here at Benson Cliffs to photograph Gannett. For those of you that may not know, uh, Bempton Cliffs is a massive seabird colony comprising of these huge chalky cliffs. Um, you can expect to see gannets, guillemots, razorbills, kittiwakes, puffins, as well as numerous other species, but they're the sort of big ones. Um, but yeah, gannets in particular I've come for because they are a wonderful looking bird and they're great to photograph and here you're pretty much guaranteed to see them. Obviously this sort of place, it's you're guaranteed to see the wildlife. Um, so it's important that once you've got all your sort of standard shots, you can really use it to work on some different techniques and that. So I've come down here early in the morning to get some nice soft morning light. Um, but evenings are good as well and overcast days, um, particularly because the gannets are white and they can be difficult to expose for. But it can be a bit of a sensory overload if you're not careful. You've got to get your concentrated mind on because there's just so much going on. If you're not careful, your camera is just flying around everywhere trying to capture everything. So coming down with a bit of a plan to concentrate on a few things is far better and will probably get you better shots than just going at it haphazard. So this week I've been trying to get a few different shots so I'm looking at behaviours and other ways I can just sort of expand my portfolio of gannet shots. So a few things I'm working on are behavioural shots. So gannets will gather grasses from the cliff tops to build nests with and all sorts of stuff um, and that's quite particular to the early part of the breeding season so yeah I mean it's quite good because all the grass is situated on the cliff tops here so they're um, quite close to you when they're gathering it, which means you get quite a lot of opportunity to shoot them uh, while they're doing this. The trick oftentimes is that they do tend to do this in large groups. So either getting a nice composition of a group can be quite difficult, or um, alternatively singling one out, which can also be quite difficult. So I tend to drop down to sort of, so I'm peeking over the grass, so you've got the grass in the foreground, and this just helps you eliminate some of the other gannets. So yeah, another bonus of being down here nice and early is that you can get to play around with slow shutter speed. So whilst it's still reasonably dark, I managed to get a shutter speed of about 30th to 40th of a second and try and you know, pan with the bird to keep it sharp and um, just fire off a few shots. I mean, I did fire off quite a few, but I got a few that were reasonably sharp and I was quite happy with them and it was just a good technique to try. And again, having your subject readily available just helped to, you know, keep practicing really.
yeah, gannets can also be quite aggressive. So I was trying to get a few fighting shots as well. And I could see this couple sitting on a ledge that were obviously staking out their territories or something and getting closer and closer and kept having a peck at each other. So I concentrated on them for a while. And uh, sure enough, before long, a sort of bit of a bust up ensued. And they just tend to sort of grab each other by the beak and all the rest of it. So I managed to get a sequence of shots that I was quite happy with there. Um, and it's sort of another behaviour to add to my gannet images. causes exposure problems if you're not careful. Um, it can be difficult even in low light just to keep the whites balanced. So what I tend to do is just underexpose anywhere between a third of a stop to a full stop depending on light conditions and just keep checking your images religiously and keep your eye on that histogram which is particularly good in these um, mirrorless cameras as it's there in your viewfinder. Particularly if you come at times when you know the crowds aren't here, so I, like early mornings and late in the evenings, is that you get to see some wonderful things. I mean, forget the photography for a minute and just spending time out in these sort of environments uh, is just magical. Like because we're on the cliffs here, I you know had the pleasure of watching a storm blow in. And there's been barn owls about. There's been all sorts of birds and foxes when I've turned up in the morning. And it's just, yeah, it's just, you know, photography for me is a is an excuse to be out at these times and be out to see these things and, you know, engage more with the natural world around us. And that's, you know, <laughs> what it's such a great tool for. Like with the gannets, you know, I might, if I wasn't doing photography, I might just come down here, watch the gannets for a while and then go home. But because I've got a camera, it kind of forces you to look at their behaviour in more depth and understand them a bit more and get to know them more. And that's yeah kind of what I'm trying to do with my photography anyway that's enough of me yabbering on I'm gonna get a cup of tea and get back to the car because it's now evening and dark so till next time happy shooting mm -hmm.